Namskar! So hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna review another watercolor set and this set is from India's most popular art materials line. This is no other than Kokuyo Kamlin's Camel Artist's Watercolors. The sets that I got are these 12 color shades set and this is a tube set actually and each tube is 20 ml. As you can see, the covers are different, but they are the same sets. So, these are the same tubes. The reason why I got two is that because I want to uh, just, you know, hoard. Because I find them really interesting and very much affordable for their quantity. Okay, so I got this set last year, 2019, in Amazon US for 25 US dollars or roughly 1,300 Philippine pesos. That price does not include yet your Prime membership, your taxes your shipping fees etc and of course if you are gonna buy this directly in India or from an online shop in India the price is gonna be much much cheaper and I actually tried buying it from an Indian shop but unfortunately my payment can't proceed for some reason I don't know so I just resorted into buying it in Amazon US through a friend there so now let's review our set but first let's set this aside because this is new and review this first set instead so the box looks pretty standard and as you can see there's a little crumpled area here but that's okay and here's the name camel and their logo it says here artist watercolor troops assorted shades 12 by 20 ml it says here it conforms to AST MD4236, so it's non-toxic. And here is a painting of Mr. Sagnik Biswas. This is a beautiful a painting. And on this side, they provided the, of course, the company name, the address, the website, and the telephone number, and the email as well. So if you have questions, you can email them. And behind, they provided this swatch sheet that they did not provide in the other set. So I don't know which one is more updated. Anyway, you can find this information in their website. I'll be putting the information below in the description box. And according to their website, they have 48 colors. And they actually provided a swatch sheet there, a color chart showing the 48 colors and they also provided the opacity or transparency rating and the light fastness rating as well however i do not know the basis of the light fastness because they did not provide the pigment code information and uh, they just uh, rate it as a b and c a for absolutely permanent b for permanent and c for fairly permanent and checking this set 9 out of 12 are rated B or permanent, while 3 are rated as A or absolutely permanent. So now let's take a look at an individual tube. So this is I think an aluminum tube with a plastic cover. And they provided here of course the name of the brand, 20ml, the number code, the color name, the light fastness rating so the series so this indicates the price range of the color and also the transparency so this means semi transparent so here is the Camlin Kokuyo logo and brand name so behind they provided the AP information and the same information that we can find in the box so again, there are no pigment code information provided, even in the tubes. 20 ml tubes in watercolors are not actually that common. So let me just show you other tubes that I have. So let's start with the 5 ml tube from Winsor Newton. Then we have these 10 ml tubes from Van Gogh. A 15 ml from Daniel Smith. And the 37 ml from Da Vinci. So now we are ready to swatch and do our sample painting and for this we are using as always our chest 185 cotton paper and I'm gonna be spinning this up to uh, you know save time and also we are gonna be dotting down the colors in our swatches to save time as well so if you have comments or questions just comment it and I'll be answering once ready.
I'm quite pleased that there is not much issue on binder separation except for the cobalt blue and the viridian hue but it's not very severe so it's okay it's tolerable so now let's do our swatches the first color is lemon yellow So this is Gamboge Hue. Next we have Vermilion Hue. This is like a fire engine red. This is very intense. Next we have Crimson Lake. Next we have French Ultramarine. This is very deep and I love it. Next we have Prussian Blue. You know, I'm not a fan of Prussian Blue because the pigment is not stable when it comes to light fastness. But this serves as the cool blue in this set so let's welcome it. <laughs> Next we have Cobalt Blue Hue. So it says hue, that means it's not a real cobalt pigment. I suspect this is a mix of ultramarine and thalo blue. Next we have viridian hue. So if it's a hue, it's not a real viridian pigment. It means it uses thalo green. Next we have sap green. Next we have yellow ochre. And this is of course expected to be opaque. Next we have burnt sienna. So far the colors are all very surprisingly intense and vibrant and I'm happy about that. This is a beautiful transparent brown. And lastly, we have ivory black. So now we're done with our swatches. Let me just uh, show you nearer for a close-up look. I am happy that they provided here the primary colors, a warm and a cool of the primary colors. But I'm quite surprised that they have three blues. I am happy with just two for a 12 color set. I prefer to have another brown instead of just one or two. And um, the colors are all vibrant and mostly transparent except for these two and the also the, ver the vermilion but let's wait until they get dry to uh, see uh, their transparency. Also this one is of course opaque but uh, let's see if uh, they remain opaque once it's dry. I would also like to commend the French Ultramarine which is very deep and uh, very granulating and it's also uh, warm and I prefer that an Ultramarine be that way. So now let's do our sample painting and of course I'm gonna be speeding this up again. So if you have questions please don't hesitate to comment it down. So for the trunk of this tree, I'm using the combination of the French Ultramarine and Crimson Lake and the Burnt Sienna. So in this exercise, I am assuming that the light is coming from the other side, from this side, so it's sort of an against the light image.
So now we are done with our sample painting and before I give my final description of the paints and my verdict, let's compare first the Kokuyo Kamlin Camel watercolors with the other brands that we have reviewed. So let's start first with the Asian brands. So let's start with the cheapest. Let's start with Superior watercolors. As you can see, both are very vibrant but this time I think I need to give the point to Kamlin. Uh, camel watercolors because the colors have more feelings they have more character and um, it feels more natural next we have Sakura Koi packet field sketch box and again of course I think I need to give the point to Kokuyo Kamlin because they don't have the weird granulation that the Sakura Koi has and uh, both are vibrant but yes the point goes to Kokuyo Kamlin next we have Prima Marketing's Tropicals and uh, obviously they're both vibrant they're both intense but i think i need to give the point this time to kukuyo kamlin because the workability is better and um, i just feel that it's more transparent generally next we have the sonnet watercolors i love sonnet watercolors they're very cheap they're very vibrant i don't have much issues about this but when it comes to uh, flow, I think I need to give the point to Kokuyo Kamlin because um, it flows better. As you can see, there are not much uh, termination or uh, stopping of movement of colors as compared to the Sonnet where the Ultramarine stopped at a certain point here. Also the Azure and also the Burnt Umber. But both are really good paints so both are great but this time the point goes to Kamel. Next, we have Paul Rubens watercolors. Both are great paints. I think when it comes to vibrance, the point goes to Camel. But I think the edge of Paul Rubens, aside from the provided the pigment code, is that it feels thinner. It feels more like watercolors. But also, these are great paints. I think this is a draw this time. I think we have a tie. Next, we have Holbein watercolors from Japan. Um, when I started painting, the feels or the feeling that uh, Kokuyo Kamlin Camel gave me is like that of the feeling that I have when I used Holbein. They feel a little bit thick and heavy, but when it dried, uh, the Kokuyo Kamlin dried very um, thinly, more transparent and more uh, what they call this matte, which I prefer in a watercolor. So um, it's hard but I think I need to give again another draw, another tie when it comes to uh, my pointing system. I love both of these paints so uh, it's a tie for me. Next we have Mijello Mission Gold Class. This Mijello is from Korea. I think this time I need to give the point to Mijello because I think the edge is the transparency and the thinness. It feels more like uh, watercolor. So, uh, well, that's just me. That's my preference. So, uh, yeah, the point this time is to Mission Gold Class. Next, we have White Knights from Russia. And just like Okuyo Kamlin, at first, you know, the White Knight paints feels like um, somewhat heavy or thick when you're using it. But once it gets dry, it becomes thinner. It becomes more watercolor. It becomes more transparent. They have the same issue, but... As you look at the product, you can see that the end product gives you uh, more transparency by a bit in White Knights. So um, I think I need to give the point this time also to White Knights. But you know, the difference is not that huge because these are both great paints. Now let's go to Van Gogh watercolors. They both gave me at first thick feeling, but when the paintings got dry, when the swatches got dried, it became more transparent so um, I think the edge of Kukuyo Kamlin is that it's a bit uh, more intense but um, Van Gogh gave me the pigment information so that gave me a feeling of security when it comes to why uh, the light fastness of my painting so um, I don't know I think I need to give the point to Van Gogh just for the pigment information or even a draw okay so let's give it a tie and finally Oh, we have two more so let's compare it with the Rembrandt um, Rembrandt is a very uh, reliable brand from Netherlands also from Royal Talents and I cannot deny the fact that they're very easy to use they're very 
reliable in that in that uh, consideration and they also provided the pigment information they're vibrant and i have no complaints about it except for the expensive price so i think i need to give the point this time to rembrandt luxury pocket box set and lastly the daniel smith ultimate mixing set and i know if you know me you know i'd give the point to daniel smith ultimate mixing set because this is my basis of comparison because i've been using this for quite some time now and though i did not provide here the pigment information uh, daniel smith is known to be providing it anyway i just forgot it to have this in this swatch but when it comes to uh, intensity they're both intense when it comes to uh, flow they both flow well but daniel smith gave me i think uh, the character and the range of colors and also its availability so i think i need to give this time the point to the daniel smith ultimate mixing set so now that we are done comparing our kokuyo kamlin watercolors with the other brands that i have now let's discuss if it's recommendable or not Okay, if you're gonna ask me would I recommend the Kokuyo Kamlin watercolors, my answer is definitely yes. I can't see any reason why not to use it, especially if you are uh, from India or if you have uh, access in getting these paints. They're very affordable and they're very uh, good for their price. So uh, the only thing that's holding me back I think is that they did not provide the pigment information but that's just me because I am a light fastness uh, OC person when it comes to uh, watercolors so uh, for me that's important but I think I can trust them because uh, they provided somehow the light fastness information in their website so I can take that if you are a beginner this is not a bad set they have other sets they have 18 sets they have 24 sets so you have lots of choices to choose from. They also have cakes and they also have student grade paints if you like to try a cheaper alternative. So again, if you're going to ask me, go ahead, try these out. This is a very much recommended uh, watercolor set from India. So if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to comment it below. If you have suggestions, if you have recommendations or anything, I want to hear you. So just comment it below and... I will be answering you as soon as I can. So again, thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, please do subscribe. And don't forget to like and share this video to support my page. Again, thank you for watching and see you again next week.